All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Nancy Geary, who is up in San Francisco. How are you doing, Nancy? Really good. Thank you. Excellent. And um, Nancy has been working as a speaker of voiceover and... Uh, she has done a lot and spent a lifetime of training with some of the most famous names in corporate America, including Johnson Controls, Harley Davidson, Northwestern Mutual. And she has gotten a great perspective and insight into how organizations operate. So, Nancy, when it comes to, when it comes to training, right, why is it so important to really understand and maybe create customer bespoke training for an organization as, as opposed to where, let's face it, a lot of organizations kind of pay lip service to training. So they just see whatever's out there and they just sure. throw it at their people and hope for the best. Well, one of the things I think is really important is when a person is going through a course, if they can see themselves like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. that's me. That's what I do. Those are the problems that I'm faced with every day. They're more likely to be engaged because it's relevant. Mm -hmm. It's going to help them do better at their work and maybe sometimes even at home as well. So what are some of the, uh, so as you've worked with these corporations, what are some of the, uh, what are some of the challenges that they have uh, employed you to overcome and what were some of the strategies that you put in place to do that? Well, one of the challenges is just to keep up with how fast things change. Mm -hmm. So to really keep, you know, there's a new way of, there's a new process, there's a new tool. The way we're going to work is now moving in a new direction. Uh, we used to follow, this path, now we're following this mm -hmm. path. So just to keep, just be able to have things ready just in time when people need it. And one of the things that I found was really important at the very beginning is to do uh, some form of a project scope assessment, because what that does is it gets everybody aligned in what the goal is, what, you know, what lane are we running down? What are we trying to accomplish? So that if anything starts to shift or move during the content creation process, you can make a good decision about well, you know, are we definitely moving in another direction as a company so we need to adapt? Or are we letting some other kind of background noise come in and take us off what we really believe is, is a good plan to, to move forward with? Yeah, and also, um, and one of the things that you, you really advocate is the idea of storytelling and bringing content to life. And I was talking to somebody else recently uh, about this topic as well, about why stories resonate so well. With, I mean, we know instinctively that they do, but I don't think we always understand why. Um, but most of us, you know, culturally come from... Um, uh, come from cultures with long traditions of yes. of, of storytelling and, and of um, of verbal history and things like that. Um, so why is it that that uh, storytelling is so powerful when it comes to training? I think it's very powerful because it anchors the points. Someone mm -hmm. can give uh, a lot of facts about the success. They can get all the, st the statistics about this is our successful quarter. They can run down. We, we met all these targets, but it doesn't really connect with the audience until you can put it in the context of a story. These are the people that we helped. This is what, this is what happened. We were able to move the change, you know, the particular way of a customer's working. I had somebody that worked for me for a while and he did, you know, he packed boxes and he did accounts receivable and he was, did not want to go to this all hands meeting for mm -hmm. our big client at that time. Cause it was like, ah, you know, I just do, I do my job. I'm fine. Well, we got there and he said, until people started telling stories, this is an energy right. efficiency organization about the difference that we made in our state, the difference we made in a company being able to save enough energy that they could hire more people or if the cost of renovating a building was cut way down and that made a, a, a difference in how everybody was, was working together. And he was like, you know, I'm so glad I went to this because I had no idea what I was contributing to until I heard those stories about how our work is impacting businesses in our state. And, you know, and he was a guy who was just packing, you know, doing accounts receivable and packing boxes. <laughs> and <laughs> the that's funny. story you know, engaged him. Yeah, no, and it's great because we can get so caught up in the facts and figures and the graphs and all the analytics and the, and everybody's talking about big data and data analytics, which which has its place and is important. But like I said, I mean, it's no accident that 
um, oral traditions were used to pass down, uh, you know, stories before there was, you know, um, written form or mm-hmm. when when books and that weren't that uh, prevalent or whatever, because of the impact stories had and the ability of people to be able to carry them forward, right? Right, and and a lot of artwork too. Mm-hmm. You, you know, that you could look at this in a church, a huge mural on a wall, and they could tell the whole story to the. The worshippers, I guess, is the right way to put it. But I mean, it, it was that talk of the first sales jobs? Maybe I don't know. But it, you know, was a way to connect. They could look at the images. They would tell them the story, and then they would gain this understanding. And there was always, you know, a lesson or a moral mm-hmm. in a lot of the um, original fables and Bible stories. It was, it was, there were teaching points throughout all of those mm-hmm. in a way of this is how we're going to operate. This is how we're going to maintain order in our society. Yeah. And when you do, when you do, um, you know, work with companies and, and create, uh, you know, custom training and that, I mean, how much, uh, how much of that do you really try to embed, as you said, with storytelling and that to, to um, maybe explain concepts and, and things that otherwise might be difficult for people to understand or to retain? Because let's face it, I mean, what do we, what is the t- um, statistic It's something like 80% of training is forgotten within the <laughs> next first two weeks or whatever, something like that. But um, when you approach it, how do you ensure that there's a little bit more stickability, if there's such a word? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good word. Well, <clears throat> excuse me, as we're working through the content, you know, we're just, we're, we'll start out and we'll just do a straight up, here's, here's the narration, here's the key mm-hmm. points, this is the order, this is what, we, what we've got to cover. And then to come back and go, what would be a way, a story that we could tell that could explain that point? Mm-hmm. And I, I, sometimes, you know, I, I liken it a bit to the hero's journey, that oftentimes it's not necessarily the company that's the hero, but they're like, they're like the guide. And they're, right. you know, make the customer the hero in those mm-hmm. types of stories. I was working with uh, some accountants and they do a lot to really make a difference for small businesses. I mean, you would think, sure. yeah, I've got to get my books in order. You know, it, it's so overwhelming to somebody, let's say as an artist and, you know, they're selling all this great artwork and now <laughs> they got to keep their books and their minds just don't go there. But then just that, uh, that accountant, that bookkeeper that comes in and helps them get organized and gives them some good solid business advice that can just make a difference that can free them up to do what the part of the business that they're really meant to do, not the part that just kind of, just, you know, kind of sucks the life out of them, if you will. Yeah. And I think there's a, there's a really important point here that's coming through and that's where you are, you are looking to try and attach uh, meaning and purpose to what people are doing. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Because that's after all, sometimes that gets lost in the mechanics of what we do. Right. Um, so being able to connect and reinforce that makes people more, uh, you know, maybe more engaged in their own jobs. Right. Yeah. Oh, you know, everybody wants to feel that they contribute. I, that's what I, I believe in whatever role they're playing in a company. They want to feel like that somehow they're getting up, suiting up, showing up every day and doing their special tasks, that it's going to make a difference in some way. I like to think and what, anyway. Yeah, and you've worked with some great organizations. Yes. And, and obviously these are organizations with a, a commitment to training and development in, in different ways. And, and tell me, why do you think that is, why do companies like that invest and consider important? Because, you know, I, I have a background, I've worked in, for training companies. I ran some sales training companies in, in the past. Um, and I always said that, if you've got a hundred CEOs in a room and you said to them, who here thinks training and training is important, like a hundred hands would go up in the air. But then if you said, how many of you are devoting budget to training this year? <laughs> you know, maybe you get a couple of them, right? So we all like, there's an intellectually people say, yes, training is important. But when it comes to the actual investment or devoting time to it or whatever, they back up. So the organizations you've worked with, why, why have they seen it as critically important to engage somebody like you or whatever to really um, not just invest in training, but make it the best it can be? Well, part of it is certainly efficiency, Mm -hmm. that if you're spending a lot of time on uh, support calls, for example, you're spending hours there, you know, you're paying people to be there to do that work. So sometimes you don't always look at it as critically, but if you can put forward uh, customer training where you can point people 
to here, go and take this short course and that will answer your question. Or you can put your customers through a more specific program. Mm-hmm. Your support call should go down. And that's, you know, right. a reduced cost of labor. I think it's also becoming, from what I've been looking at lately, a big retention strategy. Right. A lot of our millennial population, it's not just about, you know, here, here in Silicon Valley, you know, where you get, oh, we get free breakfast and free lunch and all these kinds of perks, but they want to invest in their professional development. Mm-hmm. So, if, it, so you, if you want to retain people, you know, give them a good breakfast, but then <laughs> train them in how to do their work effectively <laughs> and give them opportunities for professional development so that they can grow in their careers. So. Yeah, no, and I think that's I think that's a great point, and I think it's something that perhaps has gotten lost over the years. Um, again, I mean, I certainly think that it's uh, you know a lot of organizations have paid lip service to the idea of professional development, but as you say, now it's becoming probably, and maybe it's for selfish reasons because you know they want to retain people or whatever. But I mean, it's good, it's good that it's finally maybe coming, you know, getting the attention it deserves. I, I think so. And there's so many tools there that are available now mm. where you can create things much more quickly. Right. And, you know, early in my career, you'd spent months doing analysis and then you'd go through this, you create this design and then you go in, into the mm. development phase and you needed to have programmers and graphic artists and writers. Yeah. Now, if you're a good writer, you can, you can plug into a lot of these tools. You might need a little bit of programming. You might want to have somebody come in and just design a template that's very well branded that everybody will work in. But it's not that you have to have a whole team of people with all these different skill sets to create these courses anymore. Yeah, so no, it I think it becomes so much simpler. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's an excellent point because if I didn't think back to early in my career, I actually did technical writing for a while where I was I was at the front end of that whole process, yeah, writing yeah. the content before handing it off to to storyboarders and designers and right, programmers, right. et cetera, et cetera. And now that, so it's like the, the, the barriers have come down in many ways to, to the, you know, development of it. So in some ways, there's no real excuses not to be able to put good, good uh, training in front of people today, right? Yeah, exactly. And another thing I think that has happened is you, with YouTube, so many times you're yeah. like, you know, the how to go to YouTube, how to, how how do I create a course or how do I knit this particular stitch? And I'm just making things up, but a lot of people going to YouTube for how to, and I think that people are at the point where there's not as high of an expectation for production value anymore. Sure. You need to have good audio and things need to be well lit, but it doesn't have to be this highly polished uh, piece anymore. I mean, certainly for marketing, you want things to to Mm -hmm. be at, at a higher level, but People are more concerned about if, if there's something that's really important for me to be able to do my job, I'll go in and I'll look at it and I'll review it. It doesn't have to be perfectly produced if it's going to, if I'm, if I'm going to be able to like move forward and get on to the next thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that's a great point as well. Yeah. I think we have become very discer- you know, very good at sort of saying, well, I don't really care about that. I, you know, what it looks like so much is, is it going to give me the information really quickly and is going to help me do what I do? And is it um, clear? It still has to be, it has to clear, be well yeah, written, yeah. has to be well thought out so that people will, will stick now with my, it and go through it. Yeah. Now my only problem with the whole YouTube how to videos is that it's removed a massive excuse of mine for not being able to do things around the house. You know, <laughs> when my wife tells me to fix things because I'm like, I know once upon a time I could go, I don't know how to do that. Yeah, can I, I can like, go look at YouTube. <laughs> I know, <laughs> exactly. pretty much whatever you want to look for. Yeah. Um, okay, well, in the, in the last few minutes we have here, um, Nancy, um, what other insights would you like to share with people about, you know, what they should be doing today around professional development and training and why they should be engaging with somebody like you to, to help them develop? Because, you know, we're saying it's, it's, you know, the tools are out there and it can be easier to do things and all of that. But that doesn't mean, just because you have the tools doesn't mean you have the knowledge right. or expertise right. and how to put it together in the most effective manner, right? I, well, I think the two most important things about bringing somebody like me to the, to the table is I'll help people with coming up with a good plan and a solid design that mm-hmm. they can build from. 
oftentimes people like they just jump in and they start writing and go, well, I'm going to write my introduction. I'll come up with my title and then I'll go instead of starting and saying, where do I want to go? What do we want to accomplish? And then looking across the content and saying, what's the best way to deliver it? And even, and more importantly to say, and how much of, a lot of people, we're, we're, we've got more content than we know what to do with it sure. in a lot of places now. So it's really important to look across all of your content and go, what should be put into a training program? What makes sense as a support article? What makes sense is, should it be a video? What's the best way to deliver it? Do, do we need to do something quickly? So we're going to do a webinar and record it and then maybe repurpose it into another um, vehicle later on. But it's really just to help people kind of just get to the point of what they want to cover, how much to cover, and mm. how they want to deliver it. Yeah. So and bring another and, set of eyes. Yeah. And also, if you think about it today, I mean, you have people who consume information in so many different ways and preferences that sometimes you have to deliver it in multiple ways, right? Yes. Like a I lot mean, of the times, first thing you do when you put something on, you know, that, I mean, nowadays you put something on, the first thing somebody's going to say is, can I download that? Or can I, oh, there's always somebody who will say, can I print that? And, uh, you know, so there's like all these people who look at things differently and receive things differently. So yes. you have to understand that too, right? Or I spend a lot of time in my car commuting or in yeah, public transportation. Exactly. So you? I want to I listen. Yeah. There's all different ways to to approach it. And you know, people will say, well, what's your expertise? Like what, you know, I talk about working <laughs> training. Well, what do you, well, you know what? I, I know a little bit about a lot of different types of businesses because it's been my job to help the experts get, you know, from, get from what's up here out yeah. into whatever the right um, delivery vehicle is. Yeah, well, this has been uh, fascinating. Uh, so Nancy Geary and your website is Nancy Geary and that's N-A-N-C-Y-G-I-E-R-E.com. That's correct. Uh, all, of your inf- all of your information will be up on, on, this, on the site. Uh, and again, and talking about people who like to consume things in different ways, this uh, the video <laughs> will be available and this will also be available as an audio podcast for those people Wonderful. in their cars and on, the, uh, on public transport or whatever. Um, listen, Nancy, this has been great. Thank you very much for coming, uh, coming and talking to us today. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.